Hey all, AK here. I've teamed up with Vespers and the Warp Academy crew to bring all of you some free new tutorials and free production tools. You can learn more about me on my website, aktunes.com, or check out my trainer profile back at Warp Academy. Don't forget to click this link and grab the free download so you can follow along with this tutorial. All right, let's get to the good stuff. Not all DAWs have this problem, but every live user has had this problem before, where you pitch bend MIDI at one point in the track, and then everything sounds out of tune for a while. And you're like, ah, this is not what it's supposed to sound like. Let me define the problem clearly. Live has an interesting way of storing pitch bend information. Unlike other envelopes that get their own automation lane, pitch bend information is stored inside the clip. So even if you write pitch bend information into a clip, you'll only be able to see pitch envelopes if you're focused on that particular clip. When you create a new MIDI clip, Live automatically does not create any pitch bend information on that clip. This is signified by a dotted line across the center. Now we can demonstrate the problem. Live executes the envelopes as time goes on. So here we have a note bending down and then coming back up. Sounds boring, but fine. And now this next note on a separate mini clip plays just as you might expect. However, if I trim off some of the original MIDI clip such that the pitch bend envelope does not fully come back to zero, we clearly see and hear the problem. Because our clip length tells Live to stop playing that note before the pitch bend envelope has reached zero. The pitch bend value stays where it is, it does not jump back to zero. And because the next clip on the track does not contain any pitch bend information, remember that dotted line, that note will play while sending the wrong pitch bended value to our soft synth. And because pitch bend is not stored on the timeline, but inside of a clip, there's no re-enable automation type quick fix to deal with this problem. In short, if you're not super precise with your pitch bending and readily cognizant of clips that may end in the middle of a pitch bend envelope, when listening back to your tracks, you may hear something that's just off, harmonically messed up, or just not at all what you intended. When you have a lot going on in a project, it can often be hard to find which track has the pitch bent problems. Okay, so now we've described the problem, let's talk about a couple of ways to solve this in live. The first technique comes from a philosophy that the best way to mitigate problems with pitch bent or anything else is to deal with them before they start. So whether I'm penciling in a MIDI clip or just playing the piano, the first thing I do after I write notes into MIDI is to put anchored pitch points at various intervals, usually one at the start of each note or at the start of each bar. This ensures that even if you get wacky with pitch bend at a different time in the track, every note, or at least every bar, is anchoring the pitch bend back to zero, so we don't have any unintended pitch bends getting stuck anywhere. Note that you can do this at any time by consolidating existing MIDI clips on a track. So if you know there's a pitch bend problem somewhere in the track, but it's hard to find where, you can consolidate the whole clip, and then you can look at your longer MIDI arrangement, resolve any conflicts with those anchor points, and then chop things back up into smaller clips again if you'd like. This can be a little bit work intensive, so another solution that's a little bit less work intensive is to have a MIDI clip at the beginning of your set, which just contains a zeroed out pitch bend envelope. So we'll create an empty MIDI track at the top of our set, and then create a MIDI clip with a note or without a note, the note actually doesn't matter, but make sure this MIDI clip has pitch bend automation that gets reset to zero. So when you find problematic pitching, just copy the MIDI track onto the offending track and use your play scrubber to just play the track back, which resets the pitch bend. This is pretty much like the mouse and keyboard equivalent of wiggling a joystick or a pitch bend ribbon to get the pitch bend envelope unstuck. Of course, this is more of a band-aid than a real workflow solution, but if you're ever playing live and hear some pitch bending problems, this could bail you out. Okay, so the third technique, and my personal favorite, is to download my simple little Max for Live device that I wrote. It isn't complicated, it's just a knob that controls the pitch bend 
starting at 64. But it lets you do so in the same way as any other device that's on your chain. And it also lets you look at pitch bend modulation in line with its own automation layer. This can be particularly useful for synths and tracks with tons and tons of automation, so you know you can see the pitch bend relative to the filter cutoff or whatever other parameters you might be messing with. Anyway, this device is quite simple to use. Just drop it in line and use this knob like any other. Note that 64 is in the middle, so 64 is like zero, a neutral position. And if you're using the knob to do pitch bend, make sure you're not also using pitch bend information in the clips. Otherwise, you'll create conflicts, everything will sound weird, I didn't program for that, and you'll find yourself with the same mess that we were trying to avoid in the first place. So that's it for this video. I hope some of these techniques make it easier for you to pitch bend with authority. If this was useful to you guys, do us the favor of liking this video so we can bring you more. Also make sure you click this link to grab a free download of all the files we built in this tutorial. Warp Academy is a huge library of production courses and free tools, synth patches, samples, templates, custom racks. It's an amazing resource for you to level up your production skills and find your chops with legit quality stuff. Oh, my God.